My question is again, a lot of people are planting long leaf and whether they're doing it for resale or... Or are they, are they trying to start more habitat? More habitat. That's a good question. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm thinking they're getting some state of business money because so many of them are doing it. There are very popular programs for trying to get long leaf back on the landscape. Uh, I prefer that to, to anything else. And but I can't, it's going to be on an individual property basis what their goals are going to be, whether or not they're seeking so the forests that were here historically or whether they're more for a commercial sort of, sort of endeavors and it, it really varies from property to property the state the funds that are available for planting long leaf don't distinguish between those uh, uh, at all but they, it's more just getting long leaf back as, as a commercially viable tree and what each individual property owner is, does with it you know a lot of them are looking for a shorter term uh, monetary um, benefits from it rather than they sort of open forest conditions that we're talking about here. These forests that the long leaf can be managed for money over a very long period of time, but you have to have about a 60 to 70 year perspective. We've done graphs of uh, calculations of based on the return that comes in from long leaf, and you know, it's below a sort of grow tree quickly cut, grow trees quickly cut. It actually, when you start getting up 50 to 60 years, when you talk about the amount of cost it is for replanting long leaf once you cut, and all the other factors, long leaf actually comes out ahead. It's only after the year 50 to 60. So fortunately, it's the family sort of own areas that most likely to benefit from this. The thing, you know, we have multi-generations. Most corporations, the chief executive officer is going to be officer is going to be there for 15 years, and he's not looking at a 50 to 60 year time frame, unfortunately. So for family lands, if, if you careful and do it right, you can actually have uh, reach a point in a few decades where the long years are going to turn out better in the short term. So I, I just don't have Well, there are a lot of programs available. The question was uh, seeing farmers planting trees, and there are some programs that have look at just those hedgerows and the buffer zones around plantings. There's one called the CRP. And actually, for the Henslow sparrow that I mentioned, that bird was declining dramatically throughout its breeding range. The CRP program, where they've gone in and asked farmers to say, take 10% a little buffer, let's plant it in native uh, wildflowers and stuff, and that actually has turned the Population declines or hinsloes go around by having that program in place. It's not as you know. Again, it, that's a very short term thing for that local uh, landowner. It's not this sort of long 50 to 70 year thing that we have with long leaf. But there are some programs you know that they're helping the animals out in this farm, farm area. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, the question was the, the wildfires that we had back in 07 and 08 that, that devastated a lot of the areas in North Florida and South, Southeast Georgia. Um, those forests were basically killed. And the most interesting thing about the, those fires was that where those forest fires had the most devastating effect were on the commercial timberlands where the no burning had taken place. Once those fires reached in public lands where the fires had been in place, they were actually controlled. So that's another thing about using fire frequently, you actually reduce the threat of these sort of catastrophic things happening. That's the problem we have out west right now. The fire has been suppressed for so many decades out right now that when it does occur, it has this devastating effect, not the sort of low uh, intensity ground fires that we have in areas that are well burned. So I always think of fires as not only providing great benefits to wildlife, but also as a sort of an insurance policy about, uh, against catastrophic fires. Uh, what about burning when the longleaf are candling? Because they're just starting to candle now. Is that a danger to the trees? The question again: candling is going to burn, uh, tree starts to uh, uh, emerge. That it depends on the intensity. It depends on when you burn. You can have a damaging effect then. But generally, uh, the burns that we're conducting on two-year basis, they don't they don't kill the individual. They may scorch up the needles, but it doesn't actually kill those uh, young young trees. Importantly for longleaf is that you have to, um, 
and this is something I face in my region where we have people who love to burn every year. They burn almost all of their property every year. Longleaf needs about 18 months from when it hits the ground and sprouts to where it's a point, it reaches a point where it's fairly immune from fire. If you're burning every year, that seeds that are put down in the young sprouts are gonna get burned up, basically. So we have some issues where the recruitment of young trees is not quite as high as we'd like because of, of annual burning. So for Longleaf, a, a two-year return interval is, is really good because when you, and also it's important to watch your cones too. We, uh, you, you can look at the cones uh, that are coming out and you can project, you know, if you're gonna have a good seed crop that year. Uh, Longleaf doesn't produce cones every year. Um, and so when that happens, you may want to delay your burning the next year to allow some of those recruits that are gonna hit the ground to take hold and then come back two years later. So that's something that we can kind of watch for as well Yes, yeah, the question is that burning should be done by uh, professionals and is there, uh, there are cert there's a certification program in Georgia. Before you can do a burn, you have to be certified by the state. And there's a, there's a workshop you have to go through and you have to gain some experience actually burning. And there are places, uh, the universities, Paul Timbers, uh, the Jones Center, they teach uh, the use of fire and work on these certification issues. There are also prescribed fire training, uh, prescribed, I can't remember the exact name, prescribed fire, oh, I can't remember what they're called, but they're, they're regional groups. And they get together about once every six months to go over the latest in, in fire management techniques. Uh, training councils, that's what, they're, that's what they're called. And in, in Georgia, for example, there's one in southwest Georgia, there's one in north Florida, and these, these get together fairly, fairly regularly. On the Tall Timbers website, we have a listing of these prescribed fire certification programs, and uh, you can learn about it there. But um, in, when you conduct a fire, too, you have to get a permit from the state to do it. Like, for example, if I were to try to cut, conduct a fire today, I would have to call into the Georgia Forestry Commission. I would give them my, certi my certification number. I'd tell them how much I was going to burn, what kind of conditions I was going to burn under, and they would either say yay or nay based on the conditions there. So it's not a willy nilly that's very well, uh, uh, it's not regulated, you know, like a professional business, but it has a very uh, uh, a good uh, certification <coughs> program and controls that are when the fires are applied. Uh, Longleaf has a curious uh, growth pattern where it has a stage called the grass stage. It sprouts and it stays there sometimes for 5, 10, 15 years right at ground level. That's fine. You can burn whenever the ground, it, once it gets that sort of thick look to it and it has that very uh, well covered tip, you may burn at that point. Um, it's not so much the height of the tree, but it's having that well developed uh, tip and the well developed leaf structure. Um, at that point, actually, burning prevents certain uh, diseases from hitting those young pines at an early stage. There's a certain disease that hits the needles, and if you burn it, it reduces the chance of that. So you don't go as much by the height, but it's by how well developed that individual is. And it can take, what well, Longleaf is doing, it doesn't look like it's growing very much. It's not doing it above ground, but it's actually sending its root system down below the ground during that stage. And as soon as the root collar gets to about an inch in diameter, that's when that tree will start to bolt out of that grass stage and start to go up uh, towards the sky. But before that, you know, again, it's been five to ten years down there at grass stage. So look more at the size of the individual rather than how high it is off the ground. Yeah. Well, again, thanks so much for your attention. And uh, again, the uh, website has a lot of information on these birds and fires, and I hope you take a visit to it sometime soon.